So today we're gonna give you a tour of our 20 by 40 garden. You wouldn't think that a 20 by 40 is a large garden, but it actually is, especially if you're doing it properly and it's planned out. And I think we have it dialed in this year and we're gonna show you exactly what that looks like. So the first thing we have right here is our first raised bed that actually is an arch trellis above our raised bed. It's just a five by four raised bed. Everything is growing really well right here and this arch trellis. If you look over here, we have a whole bunch of butternut squash growing over this entire thing, and that was the idea. Down below over here, you've got some zucchini, you've got two peppers, and we have onions. So just in this little space, we have a mass amount of diversity and food that's growing here. So what we have here is more butternut squash growing over this trellis. You can see that it's not doing so well over here. That's cucumbers. Our cucumbers did not do well this year for whatever reason. More on that later. But essentially what we tried to do is I looked at the grocery list that my wife makes every other week and I thought we can grow a lot of the things that are on that list. That's a good starting point if you're wondering what you should grow for your house and your family in the future. So down here we have celery. I purposely planted 52 celery plants. And the idea behind that is one celery plant per week. And everything that we grow, we try to make sure it's shelf stable, meaning it's stuff like onions, potatoes that lasts a long time in a cold basement, butternut squash that lasts all year. We wanted to have things that were easy to preserve, offered a lot of calories, and often times we end up eating. Behind you right here are our potatoes. And this might look kind of strange to you because it is. Down here, these potatoes are actually grown in leaves. And I saw this done online. Some people grow them in hay, but I purposely cleared this out. I took all the wood chips and got rid of it, put the potatoes right on the soil, covered it with leaves because we've got a million trees around here. So I thought, why not bag up the leaves behind the lawnmower after they've been mulched, put it on top of the potatoes, and then they grew back. And we're 100% self-sufficient on potatoes. We haven't bought potatoes in three or four years because we save the little potatoes at the end of the year, keep them in our cold, dark basement, bring them out next spring, plant them in the ground, and they regrow every year. These potatoes are starting to die off. It is August, and usually around the end of August into September, our potatoes die off. That's when we harvest them and take them inside for the year. Over here, what you're gonna notice is that we have this like TP looking thing. This is actually a thing that you put a grill on over a fire, it's a tripod stand, but we never knew that. And so I just ended up putting extra wire around it. Last year we had green beans, I believe on here, but this year we decided to do sweet potatoes. We took the sweet potatoes from the store, put them in soil in our living room, honestly in soil in our living room in a container, watered them and sprouts came, we call them slips. Those individual slips become plants. We planted them here and they come up and they actually trellis up this pretty well. Some of the plants started trellising out onto the ground. It's just, it's too much. So we had to compromise and just kind of allow them to go out a little bit. You might even notice this plant here. We've got tons of potatoes randomly growing around our garden. And that's because in years past, we may have planted a potato in the ground here and it just started to sprout and come up. We've got them in the walking paths. We have them places we didn't intend them to be, but we're just gonna let them grow. Right down here in this container, I filled it up with soil and I thought this would be a perfect container for zucchini. We did get some zucchini from it. You can see this one growing here. And again, that's what we make zucchini bread with and also uh, stir fries. So if you have an extra pot like this, you've got some soil, you might as well fill it up, you might as well use it. And you might also notice that we have a lot of wood chips here on the ground. I get those free from the city at the depository and we put those in here to, hi. hi. We put those in here to help with the soil erosion and it also makes a really nice walking path. So after it rains, if you are walking on a muddy, wet path in your garden rows, you're gonna find that the soil erodes and it's really hard to walk on, it's wet, it's mushy, it's nasty. So we do this to suppress weeds as well. And it's just nice to walk on. It makes the garden look a lot nicer and have a little bit more function. Here's our third arch trellis. You can tell the difference between Walmart seeds, like general big box store seeds and really good seeds from a seed company. These are Walmart Kentucky Wonder pole beans. And the difference between pole beans and bush beans is pole beans climb, bush beans do not. We like pole beans because we get a lot more. These are green beans. And you can tell that the beans over here have done a really, really good job. We got those from migardener.com, a really great website for seeds. And these have grown up really, really nice. We get beans every other day. We're coming out here picking beans. Celery may not look like much. Obviously there's a ton of it on here. 
So that's the plant right there. We should have one plant per week. That's the idea behind here, if everything goes well. And so far it has. Celery are not the easiest crop to grow at all. They're actually a lot, of, they're actually pretty high maintenance at first. Once you get them established though, like you can see here, they grow really well. So what we have right here are potato bags. These are any type of grow bag you'd like. I think they're 20 gallon, 25 gallon maybe. And the reason why we got these is because we can't grow where our septic system is right here. So we decided to put these grow bags here. And the, the really good thing about grow bags is obviously you can move them where you want. But the other good thing is at the end of the year, all you do is dump them into some kind of container like a wheelbarrow and you can pick out the potatoes, put the dirt back in and use them again the next year. So throughout this tour, you may notice that we have these borders right here. This is just stuff that has fallen during storms around our property or tree limbs that need to go for whatever reason. I just simply take those and I line the edge of the garden just to have a nice cleaner look so you can mow the grass on one side, have the garden on the other. This is like the crown jewel of our garden. This is my favorite raised bed by far. And what we did is we took fence pickets, the things that people use to build fences in their backyard basically, and we built these raised beds out of there. They're four feet wide by 18 feet long. 18 feet because you do six, six, and six. That's how they come at the store. And then I took those same types of saplings, those smaller trees in the woods, and I made these little teepee structures up here and just put jute twine around there. Jute twine decomposes. And so I thought we can have three trellises, a vertical raised bed over here on this side. We have a lot of indeterminate tomatoes. We also have more butternut squash. It's completely taken over. We have flowers that are eventually gonna bloom. We're looking forward to that. We've got onions. We have volunteer potatoes, again, that just started popping up everywhere. Basically just a big jungle right here. Another volunteer potato right in the middle of the, the little path here. Then if you look here, this butternut squash is starting to grow out. We had so much abundance in this raised bed alone that we could not even keep it in the raised bed. And it's pretty big. Four by 18 is a really large raised bed. It completely just took over. We've got some kind of tomato right here. I'll have to look at the label later. I'm not really sure what that is. This is just a big jungle mess up here. And I'm constantly going around. You can see here there's twine that's holding up all of these plants. The butternut squash and the indeterminate tomatoes have completely taken over, which is a really good thing. It looks like chaos, but there is some order here. We also use a lot of leaves on top of our mulch, or excuse me, we use a lot of leaves on top of our soil. You can see there it's really settled now. That's gonna help with weed prevention. It helps hold in moisture so we don't have to water as much. Basically this entire garden is very, very little work. If you compare it to a conventional garden that's in the ground where you're tilling and weeding constantly and watering constantly, and we want a garden that we could tend, not constantly labor and work and have to be out here for hours every day. I come out here for about five or 10 minutes a day, and then I go back in the house, I'm done. So it's a very low maintenance garden once you have the infrastructure set up with the wood chips, the raised beds, the mulch on top, this wood up here, this is really good to have. So we did, uh, crossbars right here from one of the teepees to the next and we've got more wood up here holding this up and it's just a really simple free setup that we have from our property that we plan on using for years to come got these great big flowers in here it's just a jungle butternut squash leaves up here and tons of stuff growing all around here volunteer potatoes tomato plants right here these are a type of roma tomatoes that grow up they're indeterminate so they're going to keep growing until the end of the season they just keep going and going and going so if you look here we've got really nice healthy tomatoes so that is growing up here all the way to the top you have a whole bunch of little butternut squashes growing again over here you can see one over here growing this is what they look like when they're small the flowers falling off right there but then when they're big you get to a much nicer size that you would think of when you see a butternut squash like this. Got a large butternut down here behind that piece of wood right there. So we're expecting a huge harvest of butternut squash this year. And this is what a medium butternut squash would look like as it starts to grow. It's kind of small yet, but it's eventually gonna grow into maturity. So this is absolutely just a mess. That's an organized mess and it's, it's my favorite part of the garden because it's, it's literally like a created jungle. I mentioned that the raised beds were 18 feet long. This was given to us by a friend, this PVC right here. And what we did there is we made sure all of our brassica, or as much brassica as we could, could fit in your brassicas like broccoli, cabbage, 
lettuce, th things like that, kale. And we wanted everything to be protected so that the butterflies couldn't lay those little um, worms in there and get into the brassica. So I covered it with bird netting. These broccoli plants are out of this world. They're super tall, like, like this tall. They're absolutely massive. I wasn't planning on that to happen, but we did get some good yields. You can tell that they're flowered already. These are done. These have been done for a couple of weeks. We're probably gonna take these out of here. And the reason why we've got these plants over here, which happen to be carrots down here, is because we had two feet of extra space. It's 18 feet long, but this is only 16. So we're trying to utilize all the space we can and what better crop to grow than carrots because they fit in the ground so well. You can densely plant carrots and have a good yield. So that's what all of these are. And eventually we're gonna to have to take these out, but we want them to get as big as possible before we take them out and put them in our house for the winter. And it's kind of hard to see, but we've got 28 broccoli plants in here and they're huge. I was not expecting them to get this big. Not expecting them to be so big, we planted a whole bunch of cabbage plants back behind the broccoli, which you really can't see. But these cabbage plants are doing well. I believe we have 18 or 20 cabbage plants here. And this is basically just our brassica bed that we tried to protect from the bugs and the worms, which I think we did because when we harvested things from them, we didn't find any on them. So I think it worked having this bug netting on here, this bird netting. And then over here, we have a cabbage bed as well. We have eight cabbages in here. They're doing okay, but I noticed that the cabbages with the broccoli are doing much better. And we've got eight of them over here because we ran out of room in the brassica bed, which is over there. So I thought might as well utilize this space and fill up this raised bed. And these are actually doing okay. So eventually we'll bring those in too. I mentioned before that the soil here in our property is average. It's okay, you can grow things, but they don't do super well. And this is an example of that. These Roma tomatoes are the same ones we had over there that I shared with you where we did that Florida weave system with the twine. And you can tell by how dark the leaves are, how much better they got as far as bushiness. They really grew out. They're just in standard tomato cages. These tomato cages are a lot bigger than they look too. We get the bigger ones. The small ones just end up tipping over. And this is done really well. We have five Roma tomatoes here. This is all gonna be canned for either pizza sauce or pasta sauce or something. That's what the function is of these tomatoes is simply just to make sauce. We want as many tomatoes as possible. They are determinate, so they only get about this tall, then they'll stop growing and they'll start producing fruit. And you can see that they're already starting to produce right here. They're small yet, but they're still getting some. We've got some bigger ones down here. Again, here's another volunteer potato plant. I'm gonna take those flowers off. Another potato plant we'll have to harvest as well. And then we had extra room for carrots. So we put those here. This part of the raised bed is empty because that's where we had our lettuce and our lettuce is now done for the year. We planted really nice flowers and believe it or not, we got these from the dollar store. And so for 25 cents a packet, we decided to plant these next to one of the raised beds where we had space. We absolutely love them. And again, it increases pollination. So we just did that whole row down here because we had the space to do it. And over here, these again, we have these wooden posts I just put into the ground about three feet. And then I put this extra chicken wire or hardware uh, wire that, that we have laying around the property. And I put this here and we had our peas here, but it's too hot for the, the peas. So we actually ate a lot of those, took the plants out, gave them to the chickens. And now we're basically done for the year with peas unless we do a fall crop. Now there's a lot of method to the madness and I'm basically taking an entire two or three years, four years worth of information that led to this system that we have and putting it in this video for you. It's no mistake that the chickens are right next to the garden. And there's a couple reasons why we do that. Every time we prune a plant, pull a plant out because it's done for the season, we feed it to the chickens. They don't always eat it, but they compost it. They break it down by having it in their chicken area. Then next spring, what I do is I take the top six inches or so of the soil from where the chickens are. And I put that back on the garden, like chicken compost, basically. We also take a lot of the leaves that fall in the yard, we dump that into the chickens. So between the leaves and the manure, that's what I fill these raised beds with quite a bit of it. Now, a lot of this is soil brought in from a different place, but a lot of it is also chicken manure compost and leaves that we have from around the property. I would say about 50-50. So these chickens do a lot of good things. We have chickens because of eggs, but I originally got these chickens to help with the garden. So we did add two raised beds. These beds where I got this lumber from, this is from when we had some product shipped to the house or whatever for a building project. 
So I didn't, I didn't pay for this either. This was lumber that was kind of just part of the shipping process. And what we have here is kind of an experiment. What we did is we bought two strawberry plants, placed them in the ground, and you can see that there's a mother plant here, a mother plant here, and we're kind of just letting them do their own thing. They've sent out tons of runners. These runners are creating individual plants. Once those plants get established, what I think I might do is pick them up or reposition them basically so that they can take over the rest of this garden. And then from there, I'll just cut the runners so that they're not going crazy. Behind this bed is another arch trellis. This arch trellis is running at 50% capacity right now because the other side's not doing well, but this side is. These are pickled cucumbers. So these are a special type of cucumber that are really good for pickling because the seeds don't get too big. They grow in really good abundance and they're really good for pickles. We already have multiple jars in the fridge just for this. Sometimes we harvest them at big sizes like this. That'd be a pretty big pickle size. Cut them, slice them however you want. And sometimes we've even harvest them, harvested them like this at this size because sometimes we like eating them that size. It's basically however you want to do it. We planted the exact same type of cucumbers over here and they're not doing well. Same soil, same sun. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but basically that's just how it is. And these cherry tomatoes have completely taken off. I purposely put them in front of the crops behind them because I thought they would be smaller. It appears that they're indeterminate. It didn't say in the package. I assume they'd be like this tall. We'd pick a few and we'd have fun eating them fresh but we're probably actually gonna end up preserving some of these because we have so many. We've got three plants, one, two, and three, just in this bed. And this is probably enough for the year for making a ton of sauce. Behind them, we have Roma tomatoes. And there's a Roma tomato plant there, there, and back over there. And you can tell they're still kind of small. They should be doing better, but they're being blocked out by the cherry tomatoes in front. It's too late in the year to switch things around, obviously, so we're just gonna leave it. And they're being swamped out and not really getting much sunlight like they should be getting. So next year we'll have to do something different. But for now, we're gonna harvest as many tomatoes as we can. They still fruited really well. You can see there are a lot of tomatoes on these plants. We believe that if you can feed yourself as much as you can, it's really gonna help with your family. It's gonna help with health. It's gonna make you a better person. It's a great healthy activity to get your family involved. If you have a chance to get out there and grow something, maybe you just start with a pot on your deck if you live in an apartment somewhere or whatever it is, get something in the ground, grow it. It's not as difficult as you think. The hardest thing about gardening is people not being successful right away. Our first garden wasn't great. We really struggled. We struggled with weed control. We struggled with getting the right nutrients in the soil. We struggled with certain crops working out and certain crops not working out. We still have that struggle today. You saw the cucumbers, how some did well, some others did not do so well. Get out there and grow something for your family. You'll be glad you did it. Thanks for watching. Take care.